afternoon. This is the Ugly Truth coming to you live from the United States Consulate here in Toronto, Canada. It is uh, Sunday, March the 18th, 2012, and today uh, there's a protest uh, here uh, organized by Afghans for Peace uh, to commemorate or to protest against the uh, 16 innocent civilians who were gunned down by uh, U.S. military forces. There was a memorial service earlier this morning in the city's west end in Etobicoke. Now we're here. Uh, people are going to protest this action and I guess uh, try to get the message out that we need to end this occupation and, and stop this useless, senseless killing uh, loss of innocent lives. So I'm here to cover the event. Uh, I believe there probably will be some speakers here and then we'll be marching to Young Dundas Square and back. My name is Masoom and I'm from Afghans for Peace. AFP, we're, we're based in Toronto and a bunch of other cities across the globe to protest the killings and the massacre of Afghan civilians by American troops in Panjwai, which resulted in the death of nine, nine children, three women, and four men, exactly a week ago from today. And it's just, as an Afghan, and, and not even as an Afghan, just as a human being, um, it's, it, it just hurts and it's heartbreaking. If you have any emotions whatsoever, it's heartbreaking when you, when you hear about nine children, nine children dying. And, and when these kids, these kids died and, and they had dreams, these kids were like any other kids, just like the kids walking around in this neighborhood or any other neighborhood. Um, they were real kids with real names, whose names have not even been released yet. But as far as we're concerned, they were real people. They had flesh, they had bones, they had goals, they had visions, they had dreams, and they had an entire life ahead of them. But to the United States, it's just a statistic and it's a hard news story to deal with. That's exactly what it is. It's just another statistic. Our lives are numbers. We are here today to let you know that Afghans refuse to be the sacrifice of a rich man's war. We refuse to have our blood spilled for the profit of a few warlords, politicians, and weapons manufacturers. We refuse to have our women raped and our children slaughtered. We refuse to be statistics, and we refuse to be classified as collateral damage. God has brought us into this world, and no one, no one except for God has the right to take us out of it. Without any further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker. Naimatullah Mujadidi, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyid al-mursaleen. Amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim Respected elders, my brothers and sisters, since there are lots of our elders here, and I was asked to speak in Dari or Pashto or Farsi, so inshallah I'll start with that. There are lots of other our friends who will speak in English to you. So, Tazham Bot Salami Mujaddad, Batamomiham Watanone Khot, Wa Kablaz Hama. درود و سلام خدا و از طریق خود به نمایندگی شما به ارواح پاک شهدای به خون خفته که چند پیش توسط چند ترورست و یا به گفته خودشان یک نفر به هر تقدیرش اونا به خاک و خون کشانیده شدند چنین به زیر پنجه های ظلم خود بگیریم به این هرگز ما نمیتانیم هیچ ملتی را مغلوب بسازیم پس پیغام ما امروز هم به ملت ماست و هم به این صاحب عزیز سفارتخانه و یا این قنسلگری و این ملتشان پیغام ما به ملت خود ما است ملت ما ملت غیور بوده و هست ما به جای عشق خون از چشمان ما جاری است و این درد خود امروز ما از جوانای خود ما از ملت خود می که این خونی که از چشمان و قلب ما جاری است این را بر دنیا ما نشان بتیم السلام علیکم ایوان مای نیم از لیما زیک اکبری ایم ا ممبر اف افغانز فور پیس وی آل نو وای وی ار هیر تودی but let's tell our government and the Obama administration why we are here. We have gathered here today 
to demand justice for the two-year-old girl who was shot in the head by U.S. soldiers. We are here to seek justice for the two girls who were first raped, then brutally murdered at the hands of these soldiers. We are here today to demand a public trial in Afghanistan for the terrorists in uniform that are responsible for the massacre in Panjwai, Kandahar. The media and the U.S. government are trying to distance this tragedy from themselves. They tell us that this does not reflect the values of the NATO mission in Afghanistan, but the reality is that the Panjwai massacre is a mirror reflection of the so-called war in Afghanistan. They claim that there was only one soldier involved in this crime. However, they completely ignore the eyewitness testimony of the villagers and the victim and the family of the victims that claimed that there were up to 20 soldiers, 20 U.S. soldiers involved in this crime. We will not fall for these lies, for we know what the truth is. This is not a war or some kind of a mission in Afghanistan, but this is an occupation of the land and its people. Let's call it what it is. The Panjwai massacre is not a first happening or a single isolated incident. Obama may have forgotten the kill team who slaughtered a 15-year-old boy and took parts of his body as war trophies, but we have not forgotten. We have not forgotten the video of U.S. soldiers urinating on the bodies of murdered civilians, and neither have we forgotten the countless drone attacks and bombings that actually target Afghan civilians and wipe, off village, wipe, off, wipe our villages off the map completely. NATO is not in Afghanistan to liberate our women, but they're there to rape them. They're not there to build the infrastructure of our country, but destroy homes, cities, and villages. They are not there to free our people from the Taliban, but they are the terrorists themselves that mercilessly kill our people. U.S. and Canadian forces need to withdraw from Afghanistan immediately. Our message to Stephen Harper, our government, is that we want our troops out of Afghanistan now. More than 75% of Canadians want the Canadian troops out of Afghanistan, yet our government fails to take appropriate action. Next we have um, Chris, and he's, he's served in Afghanistan for 15 months, so he's seen everything firsthand. He knows exactly what goes down, and he's going to give you his insights on what really happens in this so-called uh, war for, for freedom or war against terrorism. Chris. Hi, everyone. Salam alaikum. I wrote this last week, uh, the same day as the massacre happened, uh, and, and when I read the news that day, I, it was hard to deal with it, and I finally decided I needed to put, put all my thoughts down on paper and speak out against this atrocity. I was barely 15 when 9-11 happened. I was a patriotic, patriotic American, if you will. I had family members who had served in former wars. I was in the cadet program during my high school, and I cared deeply about the military in my country. I believed what I was told about Afghanistan and then later Iraq. I had no reasons to question my leaders. I, uh, it didn't even cross my mind. I joined the army a few weeks after the invasion of Iraq, as soon as I was legally old enough to join, two weeks after my 17th birthday in September of 2003. By mid-2006, my newfound recon infantry unit was being prepped for a 15-month deployment to Afghanistan. Time stopped for me in January of 2007 when I, along with my unit, deployed to the tribal regions of Afghanistan along the Pakistani border, and we spent 15 months as part of the ground war. I returned from Afghanistan four years ago this April, April 8th to be precise. What I had witnessed during my segment of missing time propelled me to eventually leave the U.S. military behind in a mid-level management position as a sergeant and as a person who would look forward to military service my entire life. At other times, we would do what we called recon by fire, just firing randomly into different areas to see if somebody would fire back at you so that you had a reason to engage. I'm ashamed, to I'm ashamed to say we called it come out, come out wherever you are. This war was about money and sustainment. There's too much money to be made. I left that system four years ago, and even though I've been scared to speak out, given how the U.S. government treats whistleblowers, there's a time where you cannot be silent anymore. For a system that demonizes whistleblowing, but allows those guilty of war crimes to walk free, I say damn you. Everything my unit did during 2007 to 2008 proved to me that we weren't, we weren't there to win it. We were only there for a body count. That was the only way that we could claim victory. I'm glad I'm not a part of it anymore, but I weep for those lost within the nonsense on all sides. War is a disease, and I cannot express enough regret for having been part of one and waging war against the proud peasant people. And to the U.S. Consulate, I tell you this, I'm damn proud of my heritage and my family. But, and I was glad to wear this uniform in the past. But I don't work for you anymore. 
I experienced the lies firsthand, and I did stuff about it. War resistors are people like myself. Uh, we've served overseas or served in the U.S. military, and once the, we didn't we didn't want to be part of any war crimes, so we went a wall and did what we needed to to leave that system. And we're seeking refuge in Canada. And Harper and his goons in Parliament have been working behind the scenes to try to kick us out because they don't like us speaking the truth about what's really going on overseas. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings be upon all of you. We're here to remind everybody, we are here to remind ourselves, and we're here to remind the media and the world. We're here to remind them of 11 years of occupation. We're here to remind them of 11 years of night raids that traumatized families, leaving them emotionally and psychologically scarred. We're here to remind the world 11 years of unjustified imprisonments that tore apart families. We're here to remind the world 11 years of torture, of waterboarding that broke down and shattered innocent men. You know, we're often told by so-called intellectuals or so-called people that come on the media, they tell us what the cause of terrorism is. And they also, they usually associate it with some kind of religious fanaticism. But I'll show you the words of Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky was asked, what is the cause of terrorism? And he replied, ignorance. And he, he was asked, how do, we, how do we avoid this ignorance? And he told the listener to turn off your TVs. He told them to turn off your TVs. And I tell you today that we, every single one of us here, we should also turn off our TVs. We should also turn off this media and stop being brainwashed, stop being conditioned to think a certain way. We should turn off this media, do away with this media that treats the lies, the, the death of innocent people around the world as just numbers and statistics. Do away with the media that treats the lives of innocent, the death of innocent people around the world as collateral damage. Do away with the media that tr treated the death of 16 people, the mutilization of 16 people, the burning of nine children, simply as a PR disaster. Okay.
soldiers on the loose. This has gone too far. This has gone too far. of warfare. They apply their democracy by dancing on people's graves. This is how they free us and consider themselves brave. Manipulation to the most ignorant degree. How can killing innocents help us be free? The entire world shuts, shuts their eyes towards our pain. Where is the freedom um, where, while the drug and warlords make billions and its respect they gain? Where is the freedom? Where is the help? Where is the democracy? I can see it hiding somewhere behind those guns, bombs, and hypocrisy. Our debt is in debt to those who killed and raped. The same people who called the strikes and taped. My fate will not be in your hands, and my life will not be shaped from the decision you and your pawns made. Bodies that are scattered, when stacked up, they resemble the Eiffel Tower. Taste of the medicines we didn't pay for is savour. We could have healed their hearts and wounds, but we're a public ran by goons. If united, we will overpower them soon. Sadly, no ins inspiration is sparked by repeated tunes. Words of empowerment don't we attack. So instead, we're represented by evil men in expensive attire. Is peace for sale? Because I'm a buyer. Your fabricated realities built this empire. Soon unity will light a match to set it all on fire. You all will then burn in your deeds. Your death is a plant from your own poisonous seed. We never appointed you to lead. Your bloodlines and races views gave a seat. And all you ever did was make us bleed. Then connected from blood ties. Except solely for the reason why the sky cries. If the clouds could feel their pain, then the rest of us must be insane. So the least I could do is feel shame. Since in the end, my, since in the end my silence will be the one to blame. So this guilt I feel would only make sense. My heart is burning from the pain. The fire from the other side of the world set it to flames. I can only feel my grief as I imagine theirs. I can't offer much but my prayers. Although I know if we break these chains of apathy and join hand in hand, we can probably save many lives, bring husbands back to their wives, to see where the pattern of ignorance derives. Next, uh, we have Eli John, who's uh, going to give us a speech. So Alexander the Great once said, May God keep you away from the venom of the cobra, the teeth of the tiger, and the revenge of the Afghans. The Afghans are here today. We, today we are standing together side by side with our voices conveying this one clear message. Enough is enough. This struggle is a struggle that has been in the works for nearly 35 years in the making. The events that have taken place in Panjwa Kandahar have opened our eyes. It has shown us that no one will help us unless we help ourselves. We are fed up and tired of hiding behind the shadows of those who told us that they would give us better, while instead getting far less and worse than we expected. Now it is our turn to take these kinds of situations into our own hands. The demand for peace and prosperity in Afghanistan should be the highest of the necessity. The demand of justice for our nation and for our people is strongly required. The American troops have fallen in the eyes of those who applauded them for their promised protection within our nation. The apologies, the apologies and money will not restore Afghanistan to the nation that our grandparents once knew. This is our time to say enough is enough. Many people have lost their lives, both American soldiers and Afghan civilians. 
resilience. This is our opportunity to build a strong nation. This is our time. This is our moment. This is our opportunity to build a strong nation. From every part of the world, we will continue to stand up against injustice. Even Ahmad Shah Massoud said himself that we will never be the pawn in someone else's game. We will always be Afghanistan. Mr. Obama, you say that you're going to bring the justice to Afghanistan. You say that you will bring the, the peace to Afghanistan. But what we see, we didn't saw in George W. Bush time. You are the person who has really employed for someone and you are working for someone. But I'm asking the Canadian Prime Minister, Mr. Harper. I'm asking the Canadian Foreign Minister. I'm asking the Defense Minister, Peter McKay. Please raise up your voice against this killing. Yeah. Stand as a Canadian. Stand the name with the nation of yeah. Canadians on yeah. that nation, yeah. the nation of the peace. I was traveling to Afghanistan. An American person was traveling with me. That person was not able to show his identity that I'm American. His bag had the Canadian flag on it. And I thought that that guy is a Canadian. But unfortunately, when we went to the desk to take our tickets, the guy, he showed off his American passport. And I sh told him, why you, you, do you have a Canadian flag on your, on your back? He said, well, the people don't like us anymore. We defeated the biggest enemies of the world. But we have one problem. That problem I can see today in our gathering. More than 60,000 Afghans are living in Toronto. But how many do we have here? Shame. What do we have? This is a shame. This is shame for me and for every single one of us, my brothers and my sisters. These young brothers and these sisters, they work very hard. And I am a witness that they work very hard. On Thursday, they brought the flyer to me in the center and the masjid. They work hard. But where is our elders? Where is our youth? Where is our sisters? Let us wake up from the sleep that we are in. I'm calling upon the organizations, Afghan organization, that they are taking the money by our names. They are taking the salaries by Afghan names in the center and the society from Canadian government. Where you are, Mr. President. Where you are, Mr. Speaker. But your people are dying, my brother. Your people are dying and you are sitting in your office. And, and drinking a coffee or drinking a tea or and laughing with your, with your co-workers. I think this is a big shame for those people, for those offices, for those organizations that they are working by our names. Take down your sign from your office. You are not representing yeah. Afghan yeah. people. Yeah. 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 Thank you for watching. Please uh, educate yourselves. Stop believing the mainstream media. It lies to you. Do your own research, independent research, and find out the truth. Because the truth is often ugly, but only the truth can make you free.